Increasing the safety and efficiency of the national airspace system is the primary objective of the FAA. It's the driving force behind the continually evolving technologies and procedures used by pilots and controllers through all phases of flight. In the realm of navigation, a transformation is currently underway. It's a migration from a system dependent on ground-based navigation aids to an area navigation supporting system. This change is making it possible to fly more efficient routes, arrivals and departures by providing predictable and repeatable flight tracks. It's also effectively reducing radio communications. Area Navigation Standard Instrument Departures, or ARNAV SIDS, are an important part of this navigation concept. And the FAA has begun to deploy them at selected airports across the country. Some of these departures are quite detailed and include multiple restrictions. However, when coupled with the advanced capabilities and accuracy of today's aircraft systems, our nav SIDs have shown that they can improve air traffic management in some of the nation's most complex terminal airspace. Special pilot controller phraseology and procedures have been developed for use with RNAV SIDs. However, this terminology can apply equally well to any standard instrument departure that contains altitude, speed, heading, or other similar restrictions. Transamerican 209, proceed direct raise and climb via the Prime 2 departure. Transamerican 209, direct raise and climb via the Prime 2 departure. The term climb via plays a key role in this new phraseology. The term grew out of the aviation community's familiarity with the commonly used descend via procedures in use today. Climb via serves as a form of verbal shorthand. It's used in conjunction with SIDS and RNAV SIDS to reduce phraseology by eliminating the need for the controller to restate restrictions at the remaining waypoints and fixes along the departure. As with descend via, the instruction climb via is a clearance to navigate laterally and vertically at the pilot's discretion, so as to comply with all speed and altitude restrictions published on a SID. This is even more important to understand when you are vectored off the published routing and are issued instructions direct to a waypoint on the SID or provided a heading with which to join the route. Especially in these cases, it is imperative that you understand that the climb via instruction clears the pilot to navigate laterally and vertically in order to properly join the SID profile. We'll show you a couple of examples in just a few moments. So remember, the basic premise of this new phraseology is that climb via means that you are cleared to navigate laterally and vertically at the pilot's discretion so as to comply with all speed and altitude restrictions published on a SID. Before we take a closer look at climb via phraseology and procedures, it would be helpful to discuss RNAV SIDs in general and some of the factors that affect you from the pre-flight phase through taxi, takeoff, and departure phases of flight. Whether you receive your departure clearance via voice or via pre-departure clearance, PDC, it's important to carefully review it before you take off. You should confirm that your flight management computer, or its equivalent, as well as your communication and navigation equipment are programmed appropriately. Transamerican 209 is cleared to Atlanta via the Cowboy 1 departure. Gallup transition as filed, squawk 2432. Pay particular attention to the SID name and review the SID publication itself. Determine the planned or anticipated runway and program it into the flight management system. Keep in mind that your assigned runway from ATC could differ from the runway you've programmed. Be prepared to make the necessary changes and verify them prior to your departure. Next, review routing, fly-by waypoints, fly-over waypoints, and again confirm that this information is correctly programmed. Also review all restrictions for altitudes, speeds, and headings that pertain to the procedure. It is important to take note of the SID top altitude because it is integral to the overall SID and to any subsequent climb via clearance. A given SID may contain more than one top altitude, depending on which runway and or transition that you are flying. It is critical that you review the SID top altitude during pre-flight. 
The top altitude on a SID may or may not be associated with a waypoint or otherwise depicted on the departure plate, but at a minimum it will be found in the narrative of the procedure. For operational reasons, ATC may assign an altitude that is different from the published top altitude. Furthermore, when not associated with a waypoint, this top altitude may not be included in a flight management computer's database. Finally, if the SID top altitude is contained in the SID's textual instructions, ATC is not required to provide this altitude information with your initial flight plan clearance. So remember, your only reference for this critical SID top altitude information may be the SID publication itself. In this example, the filed expected altitude on this departure clearance is flight level 330. However, you are only clear to the published SID top altitude, which is 5,000 feet. Your filed expected altitude is not relevant to and has no bearing on the SID unless communication is lost between you and ATC. In addition to the general situational awareness that you routinely acquire through your normal pre-flight activities, it is critical that you also give special attention to the proper loading of the correct runway, departure procedure, and en route transition. As you know, when you load your departure runway during pre-flight, you may have to make your best guess as to runway selection based on your flight plan, current ATIS, and other aeronautical information sources. However, as shown in this example, each runway often has a unique first waypoint on an RNAV SID. It's up to you to confirm that the correct departure runway is loaded prior to accepting a takeoff clearance. The risks associated with departing with the wrong runway programmed are obvious. This risk is compounded by the fact that many aircraft operators utilize the flight automation systems shortly after takeoff. Make certain you have also verified the correct en route transition. Even if your flight deck systems or company operating procedures do not support automated lateral and or vertical flight control of the aircraft, you must still have a full understanding of all of the characteristics of an RNAV SID in order to correctly execute the procedure. As with any SID, you must comply with all published routing, heading, speed, and altitude information. The same is true when cleared via an RNAV SID, but because RNAV SIDs are designed to maximize air traffic efficiency and minimize voice communications, it is all the more critical to understand that you are expected and required to fly the SID as depicted. In other words, comply with all published restrictions and then maintain the SID or specific SID transition top altitude. This is why it is so important for you to confirm that the correct runway and departure procedure are programmed in the FMC or equivalent system prior to takeoff. The first waypoint on an RNAV SID is often unique for that specific runway, including parallel departure runways. Therefore, confirm that the correct runway, including left or right reference, SID, and transition are programmed prior to takeoff. To demonstrate some examples of the new climb via phraseology, it would be helpful to fly through an RNAV SID. Ready for a departure briefing? Go ahead. Company standard departure briefing applies. We're cleared on the Primey 2 RNAV departure swan transition. We'll plan runway 1 left until we get our taxi clearance. We'll make any necessary modifications at that time. We'll uh, climb on a heading of 010 to 680 feet. Then proceed via 310 course to Judah, then via 359 track to Finger, then via the 058 track to Primey, and then as it's depicted, we'll maintain 3000. I agree. I'll set 3000 in the altitude alerter, and there we go. What's our filed altitude today? 290? Uh, I think so. Yes, 290, but our uh, top altitude for this transition on the SID is uh, 3000 feet. Right, 3000 feet. Trans-American 209, Dulles ground, taxi to runway one right. And Trans-American 209, we'll taxi to runway one right. Okay, runway one right, let's check that in the box. Okay, uh, we had runway one left, but I'll update that to runway one right uh, to Fury. Crossing Fury between 1500 and 3. We'll need to review that SID once again before we depart. 
and make sure that's all correct in the box, including the transition. I think the top altitude is different off of one ray. It is. The top altitude is now 10,000. Okay, let me know when you're ready for the before takeoff check. Trans American 209, wind 340 at 8, cleared for takeoff, runway 1 right. Trans American 209 is clear for takeoff, runway 1 right. Clear okay. for takeoff, 1 right. And the panel is clear. Air panel is clear, checklist is complete. Here we go. Trans American 209, contact departure. Trans American 209, contact departure, so on. Potomac departure, Trans American 209, 1200, 10000, climbing via the priming to departure. Trans American 209, Potomac departure, radar contact. All right, it shows on course to Fury. We're at or above uh, 1,500 and below three. Thumb at 4,000. Okay. Primey at 5,000. And Roost at 7,000. And Raisin at 10. And that is the uh, top altitude for this sit. Correct. So basically, climb via means comply with the restrictions on the way up to the top altitude. Exactly. As we've just seen, climb via means make all the restrictions on your way to your SID top altitude. In this next scenario, let's assume that ATC vectors you off of the SID for spacing and then directs you back onto the SID using the climb via instruction. Potomac departure, Transamerican 209, 1200, 10000, climbing via the priming to departure. Notice that the pilot provides the SID top altitude in his departure call as the altitude he is ultimately climbing to. The words climb via tell the controller that the pilot will comply with all restrictions and then maintain the SID top altitude, in this case, 10,000 feet. Transamerican 209, flighting 360, vector for spacing, maintain 7,000, expect direct raisin. Transamerican 209, uh, 360 on the heading and 7,000 feet, we'll expect direct raising. 360, 7,000 set. <laughs> and that is confirmed. Listen again as Transamerican 209 rejoins the SID and receives a clearance to continue climbing via the SID. As before, climb via means that pilots must comply with all SID restrictions and then maintain the SID top altitude. Transamerican 209, proceed direct raisin, climb via the Prime 2 departure. Transamerican 209, direct raisin, climb via the Prime 2 departure. Okay, direct raisin, climb via the Prime 2, let's set that up. Direct and raisin. Yeah, there you go. Okay, thanks. Direct raisin, and I got 10,000. And, uh, Confirm that was 10,000 feet is our new top of the SID. 10,000. Notice that when cleared direct to a SID waypoint, at which he is to resume climbing via the procedure, the pilot must maneuver vertically as well as laterally in order to properly join the procedure. In this case, he climbed immediately to cross Raisin at 10,000 feet. Note that unlike in this example, if the waypoint you were provided clearance direct to did not have altitude information depicted, ATC would provide altitude information in the clearance. Also be aware that ATC is responsible for ensuring that the aircraft will remain clear of all obstacles and terrain while off the route from its present position until established on the procedure. In this example, the pilot is cleared ahead to join the route. Again, the pilot is cleared to maneuver vertically in order to properly join the procedure. In this case, however, since he or she is joining the route between waypoints, ATC will also provide altitude information. The clearance is to fly heading 045 to join, cross racing at 10,000, climb via the Prime 2 departure. The pilot would turn promptly to 045 and climb at his or her discretion to cross racing at 10,000 feet. In our example, the pilot opts to climb immediately.
Listen to one final example of how ATC might issue a clearance instruction using the climb via phraseology. Transamerican 209, flighting 360, vector for spacing, maintain 7,000. Expect vectors to resume the prime two departure. Okay, that's uh, heading 360, maintain 7,000, and we'll expect vectors to resume the prime two departure for Transamerican 209. 360, 7,000, sir. And I see 7,000. Here, ATC is ready to vector the aircraft back to the procedure. This time, ATC will use the climb via phraseology, while also specifying a change to the published SID. Transamerican 209, flighting 090, join the Prime 2 departure. Okay, uh, Transamerican 209, right to two, 090 to join the Prime 2. 090 to join the Prime 2. Mm -hmm. Transamerican 209, climb via the Prime 2 departure, except after raise and maintain 1 2000. Okay, Transamerican 209 will climb via the Prime 2 departure, except for after raise and will maintain 1 2000. Okay, we're climbing via the Prime 2 and after raise and 1 2000. And 1 2000 is set. Okay, so ATC just changed our top altitude for the SID. Right, top altitude is now 1 2000. The use of climb via phraseology allows ATC to efficiently convey to the pilot that with the exception of a change in an altitude restriction at a specific waypoint, the pilot should otherwise comply with all the restrictions of a published SID. So remember, climb via means to comply with all published restrictions unless specifically told otherwise by ATC. Transamerican 209, the adoption of climb via phraseology climb will assist you and ATC in improving communications and making the most efficient use of RNAV SIDs. As we've seen in this video, climb via requires an understanding of new language and new procedures. Your ability to interpret and execute both RNAV SIDs and climb via instructions promises to improve the flow of air traffic and help keep our skies safe.